So, hi folks. Uh, today I'm going to do another verbal video. Now, ironically enough, three years ago when I first started doing verbal videos, the very first video I made uh, was how to open up and repair um, the verbal grip that I'd got brand new that was broken. Uh, today we're looking at the um, collective cable that came with my collective. I had it for two months. I used it a couple of hours a day. And last night, when I was uh, online playing with my squad buddies at VAF, um, I was flying along, all good in the hood, and then, whoosh, collective just stopped responding. Uh, tried plugging it in that a few times, and I'm like, right, okay, this isn't working. It's whenever I touch or move the collective, raise or lower it, I mean, uh, the unit was disconnecting and connecting. So that's not good. So I whipped out my trusty uh, multimeter. I buzzed out the cable between the black end on the normal USB and the actual collective. And one of the wires was basically intermittently making contact. So um, this morning I raised a support ticket with Verpal, who have already dispatched a new cable out to me. But um, I thought, what the hell? You know. I'm an electronics engineer. I've spent the last 30 years working in electronics. It should be easy enough to fix a cable. So this is my journey on how to fix a uh, Verpal X uh, S9 cable. So the first picture you see here is the actual connector itself. Now, there are a couple of different flavors of these cables. There's one that's just all shiny metal, and this is a newer one with this extra plastic, uh, I'm using air quotes right now, uh, strain relief. So um, I wasn't too sure what was under this, so I was extremely careful. So I've got to get this part here off to get at the wiring below. So what I did was I got a knife, a very sharp Stanley knife. Uh, you Americans know them as box cutters. And I proceeded to very carefully start cutting along this part of the plastic. Down here is the dangerous part because you've definitely got cable under there, so you know, you've got to be careful. So I slowly cut my way down through it and I cut on both sides, uh, you know, opposite side from this. And I just basically worked my way down. I also got a screwdriver, a very fine tip flat end screwdriver and started sliding it along so I could actually pry it apart and see what was under there. And eventually I cut my way down and discovered this entire part here under here is actually metal. So this was, like I say, I was being cautious because it's a technically exploratory surgery. So cutting both sides, eventually I got um, a pair of fine-nosed uh, snips, like wire snips. And I started taking little chunks out of here all the way around uh, from both, one half. And when I managed to chew my way through it and pull back, I was able to take off one whole half here, this part here. And that revealed that, oh my god, there's metal under here the whole time, so I could have just whapped at it pretty hard, but be careful if you're doing this. So, uh, once I got one half off, it was relatively easy to use the snips to, you can obviously see wee bits of detrit and debris here from me cutting at it. So I just basically carefully cut around here, using snips, as in slowly taking a wee bite deeper and deeper. And then I was able to pull this off and expose the whole part below. Uh, I unfortunately didn't take a picture of the entire unit, but there's maybe one later on that will show you that. So whenever you get the, um, the plastic cover all completely removed and the bit of cabling here, what you need to do then is to take out two screws that are holding this um, clamp on. And once you get the clamp off, um, you need to somehow grip this end part here because this part here will rotate. That's a rotating part. Grip this part here using... I don't know, I use pliers very carefully to not squish it. And then rotate this here, this section. Because it's basically you can see the threads here where it's actually screwed off. So that was getting um, the plastic shroud off and then the actual uh, cable relief clamp. And then screwing this back to get access to the goodies below. This is uh, debris you see up here is some of the bits and pieces of the, uh, the carnage of the using the the snips uh also used a knife very very carefully remove this um try and cut my way through this outer heat shrink now this is put on in production so they will have um put this heat shrink down onto the this length of cable 
they will then have stripped the wires back, soldered them on, pushed this back up, and then hit it with heat, and it would have shrunk around and put extra support around the wiring. So just be careful when you're doing this. I used a knife very carefully, just cut it back, and then you can eventually just pull it apart because it's, it's plastic. A rubbery stuff actually okay so we're now down to the the goodies and we discover that this white wire uh, has basically broken through stress and strain so this is where our problem lies so you're going to need a soldering iron some solder and a few other minor bits and um, a few other tools and stuff to do this now if you look at the wiring here if you notice this black and red wire these are, the black is the ground, the red is the 5 volts, uh, which is supply and power. You can see that they're vastly thicker than the other ones. Now, the reason why the white wire broke was it's slightly shorter than the others. And any pictures I've seen online with people with you know, done this and opened these up, it's the white wire that's broken. So the, the flaw is the white wire. It seems to be the shortest of them. And if, if there's flex happening, that is the one that's going to get hit with a strain. Now... Uh, I'll go into a root cause analysis later on of why exactly this happened and how, to how the design could be changed to fix it. But let's get on with the repair, shall we? So first thing I did was I removed the bit of wire that was on this using the soldering iron, heated it up, and then just flicked off the wee tiny remnant of wire. I then twisted this piece of white wire uh, counterclockwise to make it sort of, you know, the strands be closer together. And then I hit it with a bit of uh, solder to tin it. And that's what you see here. Now I'm using this little clamp. It's clamping on the inner part here. This is a little PCB clamp I have lying around. Which is, I don't know, it's probably about 35 or 40 years old. But it still works grand. So I clamp this so as I've got something to hold the, um, the connector while I work at it. I put a wee bit of extra solder onto the wee bucket where the wire is going to go. And then I've hit the bucket with the iron and then push the wire onto it. Sorry this is slightly out of focus. I'm certainly not the world's greatest camera. But that's the wire attached. Now I used as little as possible. There's only like a mil, maybe two mil of the actual um, wire itself making contact on here. But it's good enough. Next part is reassembly. What I decided to do was I got some insulating tape, black insulating tape, and wrapped it around the actual uh, cable, and obviously including the wires here. Um, I put about, I think about maybe eight or more rotations of, of the, um, or layers should I say, of the insulating tape on. And then what I tried to do is bring this connector up and push it over and it was, I put on too much. So what I basically did is uh, I peeled it back, cut off a layer, tried to push it on. Would it push on? Nope. And then worked my way down until I got it nice and tight. I also put an extra piece on single piece just one layer over this to sort of bridge the gap between the um, cable and the thicker part here to make it slide on easier so that's it slid on and then the actual um, metal part has been screwed back into the connector so you need to hold this part here make sure that you're not twisting the cable while you're doing this because you don't want to do that and then um, Clockwise, rotate this back on until it goes on firmly. Here is the actual other, the other part of the clamp with the two wee screws that hold it. Um, at this point in time, I decided what I was going to do was try and put some extra padding on here so as it can clamp on it quite tightly. Uh, I tried out using, I cut a couple of layers of insulating tape roughly the right size. I tried to uh, make them stick to this part. That didn't work ended up just sticking them here directly onto the uh, other bit of insulation and it, it stuck on easy enough. Then I put the clamp on and tightened up the two screws. And there you go. That's it back together again, all good to go. And uh, I then obviously tested out, buzzed out the cable and the cable was working fine. And that's the repair site done. So I fixed the, the fault with the cable. The cable is now repaired. Now this picture here is from the verbal instruction guide. So basically uh, there's two clips that bolt onto the uh, mount itself. 
and then what happens is you run the cable through them and it's supposed to provide strain relief like this so this obviously one loop of cable it's just sort of gone off screen um and this is how uh it's the recommended way of mounting it but here is the problem and this is why my cable broke well one of the reasons this part here is reasonably static now there's not going to be any strain here it's not you're not going to pull this like super tight unless you're like a total idiot um so what's going to happen is you have a piece of cable here that's static and unmoving and this part here will move it will rotate you pull the collective up that's going to move down you put the collective down this is going to move up so this is going to flex this is where the problem is so I'm like, right, well, don't want this breaking again because that's going to be a pain in the ass. So what can I do to work around this? Well, basic simple fact is you don't want flex happening here. You can have it somewhere else on the cable. So the easiest thing to do is to make this static. And that's why I started looking at this. So my idea was this. I originally was going to run the cable underneath the collective but i thought like no um that might be a problem due to gravity sort of working against you uh, side note the, the cable is made by a company called dong fu hilarious name very nice so i decided to route the cable over the top of the collective uh, and um i'm gonna try to avoid this because i need access to this to actually increase or decrease the tension so i ended up getting a couple of these boils they're little, um, they're very, very cheap. You get them on Amazon and other places. They're little uh, cable clips. Um, there's a foam pad underneath it and a little removable um, cover. Uh, and it's basically self-adhesive. So you pull the wee back in off, you push it down onto something, and then it sticks. I've used these for years for inside PCs for cable management because they're designed for a cable clip to go through them and then lock a cable down to somewhere. So there, here, this is what I ended up doing. So I put two of them on the top. I put the cable ties through them and I pull the cable ties super duper tight so that um, there will be no flex happening on this part here of the cable. So that will stop that cable potentially breaking again. I have a few more pictures just of different angles and stuff to show you. Um, but yeah, I figured two of these is probably good enough. Up. Ooh. And that's a side view with the, uh, the unit reassembled. And here is the final pick of it actually uh, bolted onto my sim pit. So the cable goes around the back, goes down onto the floor with the massive wadge of cable, and then runs to the PC. So that's it. That's how you basically um, repair the cable and Possibly a suggested way of mounting the cable to take the strain away and stop any flex from happening down here. Now, it's up to you whether you want to do that or not. I mean, I'm going to give this a whirl and see what happens. Uh, other ways you could uh, attach it would be to use maybe some elastic bands, um, you know, over the top all the way around. Uh, maybe a couple here and a couple on this side. Um, the other stuff that I was thinking about using was Velcro wrap. You can get very thin Velcro wrap that you could actually wrap around the whole thing and put in, put, encase the whole thing. Um, so those are alternatives you could try. I mean, this, this, is, this is what I had handy lying around. I thought, yeah, I've used these in the past. They can hold a fair amount of cable weight, so should be no problem holding this. So that is how to uh, give a bit more strain relief on your... Um, your uh, XS9 connector that is on your collective. So basically this is for the, the verbal guys, if you're gonna have a root cause analysis of why this broke and what you could potentially do to improve the design. Well, the original cables that came out over the last year or two, they started using these in the CM2 base, was just a totally metal uh, casing with the two, the two clamp screws holding it together. Now what they decided to do was add this extra strain relief, but there is a problem. And I'll just show you why. It's basically down to the fact that the only part that the strain relief can actually really, this plastic part can really grip on, because this is smooth metal, is here at the actual um, the little clamp boil. Now, when I removed all this, 
Uh, the screws here were actually, super, they were not tight. I mean, they, they come off really, really easily. Um, so if you wanted to improve the design, there's a couple of different things you could do. First off, this metallic piece here, if this had like a, for want of a better word, like a cross hatch pattern on it, uh, so like basically grooves like in a crisscross, then when you do the plastic molding onto it, the plastic molding will have a better, um, it'll grip better to the actual metal. And that might give you extra, for want of a better word, um, extra grip basically so as it won't slide off because this is the only part here where this is actually really clamping on because the plastic is molded around this metal part so it's got a good grip around here but all the rest of this here is just that's a waste it's got nothing to grip onto i mean the plastic is certainly not gonna you know grip onto smooth metal that's just not gonna happen so like i say you could do a crisscross pattern here or the other thing you could do would be to have a little raised notch, like a little uh, line that runs the whole way around here that's raised up by maybe a mill or two. And then when the plastic is molded onto it, it's got a really firm point to grip on. The other thing you do down at this side where the actual clamp is to improve the strain. Let's see if I can find a good pick. Where are you? Uh, yeah, here. Would be to use um, a slightly fatter heat shrink in so that whenever the, the the top part of the clamp goes on um it can exert more force upon the cable to stop the cable being pulled because that's the reason why that wire broke um because it was being pulled so that's that's a, and also another possible design improvement to increase the sort of um the clampage i mean i don't know if you can get this redesigned or not the moot point Next up is the actual wiring. Uh, is that a good one? Yeah, that's, that's the best shot I've probably got of the wiring. So you have two gauges of wire here. You have your heavier gauge, um, which is for your five volts and your ground. And then you have your data plus and data minus, which are thinner gauge. Um, first thing I'd look at is to make sure that the green and white wires, whenever they're being cut and, and the size for, for, for mounting at the factory, uh, you make them slightly longer. If you made this, the green and the uh, white wires, maybe a mil or two mil, you'd have to work out it yourselves exactly how much you need. Then what would happen is these two wires, the black and the red, which are heavier what gauge wires, would take most of the strain. The white broke because it was slightly shorter than the others. And that's the reason why that one wire broke. So if you want to improve the design, both in how the strength of it basically it would be maybe increase the length of the green and white by a mill or two so as the other ones uh the red and black take more you know they're more able to take a strain because they're thicker wire um or alternatively increase the gauge of the you know, like the green and white wires as well that would improve the uh the structural strength of how much stress it would take before this would break so uh, that's a couple of you know observations from actually looking at how this is wired together and taking it apart. Um, it's up to you guys. If you want to change the design or improve it, but it's just some pointers, man. Well, I hope this helps, folks. You all have a good day out there and stay safe.